Marha viewers, welcome to today's episode of Load Shedding, a show that focuses explicitly on current affairs pertaining to the continent of Africa. And today we shall be focusing on a somewhat positive topic. Now, before I delve into that, I'd also like to ask you viewers, if anybody of you is from Chad, to please give me a greeting on how to greet in one of the indigenous languages of Chad. Of course, I just did greet you in Arabic, and normally I'd like to greet in an indigenous language from the country that I'm covering. Uh, of course, Arabic is spoken in Chad, but I'd like to, you know, learn how to greet and run the indigenous African languages from Chad. Anyway, back to the topic at hand. I'd like to give a shout out to Mr. Owen Wall for requesting me to cover this topic. I hope you enjoy it. My name is Case Kiwinda. Today's topic is about the Grand Transaqua project. Now, why do I call it Grand? It's Grand because it is the biggest water project in the world. Phew. Anyway, it takes us to Lake Chad, which is surprisingly in Chad. And the thing that is going on about Lake Chad is that it has been, well, that it, it relies on rainfall for it to be replenishing itself. And sadly, at this point in time, more water is being irrigated or taken out than that the rainfall can replenish, which means that 95% of the lake has dried up till date. And it is quite a catastrophe because the Lake Chad Basin supports around 30 million people in the region. Now the origins of this project traces itself back to Christian quarters. In fact, the industrial group that dreamed up this project worked under the inspiration of the Vatican. In the 1960s, Pope Paul VI launched a drive for providing the means for industrialization of the developing sector. He is the author of the groundbreaking encyclical Popolorum Progressio, which spoke of his policy outlook, which was quite simple and straightforward. The new name for peace is development. The Bonifica Group was sold to the Italian Institute for Industrial Reconstruction, the industrial holding for state industries, which was the vehicle for post-war reconstruction in Italy. The actual concept of Transacqua was the brainchild of Antonio Lessina. Sadly, I couldn't find any picture of him. Anyway, he was, a for he was formerly a functionary of the European communi community, which should not be confused with the European Union. The plan is to kill four birds with one stone. The planned Lagos-Mombasa Trans-African Highway will run for over 6,000 kilometers and connect the Indian Ocean with the Atlantic, as well as the Lagos-Algiers Trans-Sahara Highway, which is practically already in operation, which once it has been completed for its full length, will permit fast links between the Gulf of Guinea and the Mediterranean. Now for the second uh, bird, so to speak, I'd like to remind you of a historical character by the name of Cecil Rhodes. Cecil Rhodes dreamt of having a railway from Cape to Cairo. And this project, you know, the Transaqua project, comes very close to it, except that it's not going to be a railway, it's going to be a riverway that will connect several African countries. You see, it should be able to connect the markets of vast African enclaves, such as Rwanda, Burundi, the Kivu region, the whole extreme northeastern part of Congo, as well as the Central African Republic, with consumer centers of other Central African countries, such as Nigeria, Niger, Chad, Cameroon, Kenya, and Uganda, and with the two ocean ports of Lagos and Mombasa for trade flows outside of Africa. The Trans Aqua project aims to trigger a practical start to economic integration. In fact, the Great Waterway would irrigate between 50 to 70,000 kilometers in the Sahel, which is on the territories of eight countries, namely Cap Verde, which is quite strange in my eyes as that is an island, Gambia, Senegal, Mauritania, Mali, Burkina Faso, and in the time this was created, actually the name of Burkina Faso was Upper Volta, uh, Niger, and Chad. Ten countries would be beneficiaries of the transport system, namely Niger, Nigeria, Chad, the Central African Republic, Cameroon, Congo, Rwanda, 
Burundi, Uganda, and Kenya, which account for one-fourth of the land mass in Africa. Wow, that is a huge piece of land. The third and obvious bird to kill is that of the filling up of Lake Chad, obviously. And the fourth was the generation or is the generation of hydropower in the region. It was just a teeny tiny problem that needed to be fixed. And that was to get the water from the Congo River into the Chad Basin. You see, it had to be done uphill. And a canal was just out of the question. It was not possible. And uh, in terms of pumping the water through a pipeline, would have just cost way too much in terms of energy and dimensions. That's when the Bonifica team had a eureka moment. They had an epiphany. You see, they decided that instead of carrying the water directly from the Congo River, they would instead go to its West Bank tributaries at a high altitude, starting in the southern region of the Democratic Republic of Congo and reaching by means of gravity the Car Chad watershed. There, at an elevation of about 500 meters, the water would be channeled into the Chari River, a tributary of Lake Chad. As a result, a 2,400 kilometer stretch of canal could be built, crossing all the West Bank tributaries along the Congo River. And as a result, want, people will be able to build reservoirs and dams. Once the canal is built, it can pass up to 100 billion cubic meters of water per annum to refill Lake Chad. Now it is estimated that only half that amount is needed to refill Lake Chad, which means that the rest of that water, once Lake Chad has been replenished, is available to irrigate land that is twice the size of Lake Chad in its replenished state. That is a massive bit of land. Wow. Furthermore, by building water reservoirs and dams on each and every tributary, it will help regulate the river flow, which enables water, uh, sorry, which enables agricultural extension as well as hydroelectricity generation. On top of that, by building these um, dams and water reservoirs on each and every tributary, it will prevent taking the water from just one river, but instead it will take bits and pieces from each and every tributary, more like a trickle down effect which means that it will have little to no impact on the navigability as well as the fishing that would go on in these rivers, in theory. The waterway itself will be navigable. It will be 100 meters wide and 10 meters deep, and it will stretch from the southern border of the Democratic Republic of Congo to the northern border of the Central, Central African Republic. Now, the waterway itself will be flanked by a service road, which is necessary for the construction of the waterway, and this can later on be turned into a railway, up to them. And also, in the Central African Republic itself, a big water reservoir will be built. Okay, <laughs> that was a lot of information to digest. I needed to replenish myself there with some water. Anyhow, Let's move on to the pros and cons of this project. We're going to start with the pros. The Congo Basin has plenty of water. The Congo River is the second largest river in the world, with an average discharge of 41,000 cubic meters per second, which flows unused into the ocean. And that is a waste. And the Bonifica team calculated that 3 to 4% of that water would be enough to replenish Lake Chad. The dams will potentially generate 15 to 25,000 million kilowatts of hydroelectricity. Now, there will also be an irrigation of 50,000 to 70,000 kilometers squared of land in the Sahel zone. This will stimulate development in agriculture, industry, transport, and electricity for up to 12 African countries. Now, this project or this generation of land is dubbed the New Silk Road, which will have both the waterway and the railway line, and this will help create a transport route from Central Africa all the way to West Africa. It has also been said that some of the area is currently known to be a breeding pot of Boko Haram recruits, and perhaps by bringing economic advancements to the area, this recruitment activity will be put to a stop. And here are the cons that I have thought of, and by any means, if you have thought of more, 
please put them in the comment box below and I'll be eager to read them and perhaps we can discuss this at a further date. Anyway, here are mine. There is not enough information on how many lives can be influenced positively with this project. There's also not enough information on how the environment will be affected positively or negatively by creating this kennel. There's also not been any informa information given on the displacement of people and wildlife that will happen once the kennel is built. And lastly, there's no clear mention of a budget and what the cost will be in realizing this project. At the beginning of this video, I stated that it would be a cautiously positive story. The reason why is because I think this project before comes into fruition has to face quite a few challenges and I'm going to try and mention the major ones that I foresaw. Let's start with Congo. Congo seems, in my impression, to have a deep distrust of the Trans Aqua project. Now, the Trans Aqua project was born around the time when African countries were just gaining their independence and it seems that it was just somewhat thrust upon Congo that this is what's going to be done and this is what we've come up with. Now, Instead, it would have been better if they had been included in this discussion so they would maybe feel part of it. You know, right now they feel that they're being robbed of their water, despite the fact that Bonifica uh, has stated that, okay, it's obvious that 41,000 cubic meters uh, are, are, fl are flowing into the ocean per second, you know, which is wastage. And despite the fact that Bonifica says that only 3, .3 to 4 percent is needed to replenish Lake Chad, which would have been a waste anyway. Uh, it's hard to discuss such things when it comes to emotions being trumped on. So that needs to be addressed. Secondly, and quite rightly so, uh, very little has been said on what, what the effects are on the biodiversity and wildlife uh, in the Congo as well as other regions by creating this canal. More, more research needs to be done on that as well as on the displacement of people as well. And there were two main countries that were both spearheading and funding this project and those two countries are Libya and Nigeria. Now we all know that at this point in time Libya is a failed state and therefore is unable to contribute towards this project and the other country Nigeria has its own woes as well. You see President Buhari is a staunch advocate of the project that goes without saying however uh, he's faced by challenges in country because of his health. People are not sure whether he's healthy or not and there's an upcoming election in 2019. So he's running out of steam in order to push for this project to come into fruition because there's quite some opposition within Nigeria itself that says that that money could be spent on other projects. It's not just Nigeria and Libya that are part of this project. This project actually has 12 countries that it needs to consider and right now it doesn't seem like there's a cohesion between the 12 that will make this project both happen as well as become a success and this is critical critical for this project. There's one thing I haven't mentioned Power China, a Chinese firm is pumping in a considerable amount of money into this project and there seems to be a bit of distrust coming from both within Africa as well as from the West as to why China is pumping money into this project. Now, whether this is justified, this distrust, yes or no, I'm going to leave that up to you to comment on in the box below and I'm looking forward to reading it. But what I will say is this. China has pumped a considerable amount of money into Africa in the last few years. And Chad is no exception. Before China started pumping this money into Chad, Chad wasn't doing too well. But once this money started coming in, they were able to work on their infrastructure and they've invested that money, maybe not on their population per se, but on things like their military. And this has come to good use because there have been quite a few situation, situations sorry, where deployment of military was needed in neighboring countries in order to stabilize uh, the situation in, in those countries. And this was done successfully. So by China investing or pumping money into Chad, uh, stability was brought about for the entire region, which is definitely a, pro a, a positive. Now, that being said, in order to keep maintaining that uh, st stability, it is, of course, necessary to tackle ongoing situations in the region. And, of course, water drying up in Lake Chad is definitely a big problem that needs to be addressed otherwise this stability will come about 
and the investment that China has made into the region at large will be put at risk. And therefore, for the long term, it's only smart that projects like this are funded. So here's what I think of the project itself. I'm still cautiously optimistic about it. Why? Because I think that there's more pros than cons when you look at, you know, when you're balancing the things. There's a lot of economic development that can be brought to the region in terms of agriculture, industry, connectivity, hydropower, the list goes on and on. What I do think though is that more research needs to be done on the effects this canal can have on the region and maybe publish that as well as, you know, bring about a budget. What's, what's, what would this project cost? I haven't really found anything on that. Maybe I missed it. If so, if you have more information on that, please share that with us in the comment box below. I'm also looking forward to your other comments. What do you think of the project itself? Uh, maybe you have omitted stuff that you would like to share as well, or maybe you completely disagree. Well, that's also possible. Please let us know. Lastly, one more time, I'd really like to give a shout out to Mr. Owen Wall for requesting this topic. I thank you for it because it makes my job easier. I, I, I want to delve into things obviously that interests you, the, the public as well, and by requesting this, it will make it a lot easier for me. Well, that's it for today. Please follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. My name is Case Kirinda. Till next time, bye bye.